a Minecraft Blender preset tutorial. First, we need to add the Minecraft rig into Blender. For this, I'm using the Thomas Rig Edit Remastered, which can be also found on my YouTube channel. Then we need to add the skin. For this, I recommend to repixel it so it doesn't have eyes. We also need to activate the second layer so that we can use it for extrusions later. I'm moving it away from the rig so we can work with it better. Hold Ctrl while moving to snap them into place. Here I've added some references of the character I will make. It's Haku from Spirited Away. Here I'm making a new material for the head. It will contain the skin color because I want the head to be a flat color everywhere, except where the eyes are. Here we will need to select all the faces which should be the material because we'll assign it to them. The skin texture looks very pale to me, therefore I will add some more saturation. More or less like this. Make sure to not forget changing the eye color. If you want to have more roundish eyes, select the eyes. Press hashtag on your keyboard and then change the mean crease. Adding more subdivisions will give you a smoother result. Then I'll do extrusions on the second layer. For that I mark all the faces I want to extrude. Then I press P, selection, to separate the objects. Then I move it over to the rig and if the second layer is a bit too big then just scale it down so that it fits. When that's done, I move it back to the side and now I will extrude from the main body. That means I will also select the parts I want to extrude, but this time I first duplicate it with Shift D and then I press P selection to separate the object. Then I will also add mean crease because if there's no mean crease it will be very roundish and you don't want it. You want it more like a blocky style, therefore you have to set the mean crease to a relatively high value. Then I add a solidify modifier to give it some more depth. I repeat this to the other parts too. I repeated the same process for arms and legs and now it looks like this. We also need to change the eyebrow color. For this, we go to the custom UI, material, custom eyebrow color. Now we will make the extrusion of the hair, so we need to remove all skin faces except the hair. We also delete the bottom part of the head. As you can see, the front of the hair is really, really flat, and I would like to have some more texture or interesting texture there. For this, I select all these pixels and then I go to the UV editor and move them around, like in this video, to an another part of the hair, which has more interesting texture. Now we have to make strands of hair, so I will select one strand. I press ALT when clicking so that I have one line of pixel like you can see in the video. Then I press P separate and I repeat it for all the hair strands. Now we need to add a subdivision modifier to all of these hair strands. I usually go with uh, subdivisions level 4. Now the ends can look a bit rounder so we also have to add mean crease there but only to the edges of the end like shown in the video it's a very tedious work to do this for every 24 strands of hair but it will definitely pay off in the end for the hair strands coming from the back to the front we also need to add a mean crease to the top edge when that's done i add a solidify modifier for every hair strand and to make it more interesting, I will use different uh, thicknesses. 
so we have some variations there. And then it could look like this. Now the really fun part begins. We have to rotate, move and deform and edit the mesh of the individual head strands. And for this, I recommend to go in the front view by pressing the button one on the numpad. Then we go to the edit mode and select the most bottom face. Then we activate proportional editing. It's the hotkey O on the keyboard. And then we rotate and move the bottom face. You can change the proportional editing setting by scrolling the mouse wheel so it affects a bigger or a smaller radius. In this little time lapse you will see how I made the first step of deforming the hair. Later on we will deform it even more. In this step it sometimes appears to me that I made a wrong decision about how thick a hair strand should be. If that's the case, I go back to the Solidify modifier and change it a little bit so that it looks more harmonic with all the deforms and other hair strands. Sometimes you want to make a pixel or face wider, therefore you just scale the face on the corresponding axis. So here I'm editing the hair material. For this I first duplicate the normal skin material on one hair strand. When that's done I just select every single hair strand. Now select the original hair strand from the edited material with shift so that it is marked in a different color than the others. And then I press Ctrl L, link materials to link them all together so that every hair strand has the same material. After that, I delete all the nodes I don't need in the material. Then, in between the image texture node and the shader node, I will add two nodes. The first one to change saturation a little bit, and the second for changing the color. Because the skin color has actually brownish hair, but the original character should have green hair. Therefore, I just change it. After that, I just tweak some settings in the shader node. I think you're now questioning yourself, why do I remake the hair now? I mean, it looked quite fine in the first try, but I think I can do better. So I just repeated the whole process and I must say, I like the end result even better than before. But yeah, I have to say, I have to admit, I spent another one and a half hour to do this. So as you can see, I literally spent multiple hours on it and Making a preset does take a lot of time, especially if you want to have fancy hair or fancy features. As you can see, making a preset can take a lot of time. For this, I spend like two or three hours, which is not that much, but it just is already a lot of time. For other presets I made, I spent a lot more time, like for the preset one year ago, I spent five whole hours. But this had different style of fare and was very more complicated because I had to model much more things myself. But spending a lot of time on presets is pretty usual and it should be done carefully because it is really worth it in the long run. Now following is just the timeless of me making the hair again.
Now with the final result. If this video was helpful to you, please consider leaving a like and leaving a subscription to my channel and maybe even comment on the video. See you next time.